lover of the suffering and healer of the hurting, we thank you for your compassionate presence among us. Every time we see gracious, miraculous healing in our midst, we see you with us. We praise you that you did not stay aloof from human need, but came and shared our weakness and experienced our need and triumph. In your holy name we pray. Amen. For this season of Lent, we have been looking at portraits of Jesus. Six portraits from the Gospels of Mark and John, and our first two was Jesus as the beloved Son, and Jesus as the suffering Son of Man. This week, our portrait is Jesus as the zealous advocate. Jesus as the zealous advocate. When I was reading this text, there was one verse that just sort of stuck in my mind and kept replaying itself over and over again. Zeal for your house will consume you. Zeal for your house will consume you. Zeal is a funny word. It's a fun word in some sense. It's funny because we don't use it anymore, right? I mean, when's the last time you heard someone use zeal in your it means intense enthusiasm. As in working for a cause or a force, it, it means devotion or fervor. And in our story, when we see the zeal of Jesus, is a familiar one. You know it. Jesus enters into the temple and he sees animals being sold for sacrifices and he sees money changing tables being set up for commerce and he becomes so angry that he turns over the tables and he drives them out and in the uh, synoptic gospels he says why are you turning my father's house into a den of thieves why does Jesus do this why does he have this zeal for God's house? And, and, and why does it come out in this almost spectacular showing of, of emotion with anger? It's interesting because that question gets asked in, in a sense, and, and Jesus answers it, but he answers it in this sort of funny way, in a cryptic way in a sense. He says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now what kind of an answer is that to why do you do this? Well, it's a Johannine answer. It's an answer that you'll find in John, right? Because John is like this. John often has these texts in which multiple layers of meaning are being presented before us. So Jesus says something, and it can be understood in a variety of different ways, and, and we see that today. And, and a lot of times the conversation then hinges on confusion about which layer we should be on. So Jesus says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the people around him think that he is speaking literally and talking about the temple that they're all standing in, and they recognize 46 years it's taken to get to this point, you will not put this place back together in three days. But of course, Jesus isn't speaking on the literal sense, is he? He's not speaking about the temple that they are in. In fact, he's speaking about a different temple. About his body, about his life. And then what he's saying is that his life and his body is the temple of God. In other words, his life and his body is where reconciliation and forgiveness will be won by God. Because that's the point of the temple, isn't it? It's the place in which God and God's people can come together and be reconciled. His 
life in his body then is the place where all will be welcomed and made right before God and the world. And in Christ then, all things are made new. And in this temple of his body it is this place where that will happen. So then if we put these things together, right, this driving out of, of the money changers and this statement that, that Jesus' body is, is in fact this temple of God, we put these together and, and we see our portrait for today. Jesus enters the temple and he finds a marketplace. The selling of animals and the exchanging of funds, he finds a marketplace. And what happens at a marketplace? You should know this, right? What takes place? The exchange of goods for money, buying and selling, maybe bartering in certain marketplaces, right? You set a price for something and then you receive it because you pay for it. And in this marketplace of the temple, people are exchanging and trading on the grace of God. And that's what Jesus sees, which becomes a, a powerful image for what's happened to the temple. And, and here's where it gets even deeper for us, and, and where I think Jesus' zealous advocacy starts to spill out of him. Because the money changers are there to, to change money, right? They're changing money from our regular everyday secular coin to the temple coin. Because the only, the only money that can be used in the temple is the temple treasury coin. And so I come there with my U.S. dollars and I have $10 dollars and I want to buy a couple of doves and I can't use them. They're not good here. The doves cost $10, and I have $10, but I can't get the doves for my sacrifice. So what do I need to do? Change my money in and get the temple coin. So how should this work? I have $10. I'll give it to them, and they'll give me $10 of temple coin, right? Is that what happened? No. You see, there's a toll or a tax or an exchange that goes on in which I need those doves in order to sacrifice and be made right with God. But in order to buy them, I need the temple change. And in order to get that temple change, I've got to pay a tax, a toll. I'm getting abused by a system set up to make me right with God through grace. And instead, it's being used to enrich people off of my need for God's grace. Think about that for a moment. It's a system built off from your deepest need that is working to enrich a few people through it. Does that sound like the goal of God's temple? And people are being abused at the very place where they have come for the grace and forgiveness of God. What kind of experience would you feel and take home with you if the very place you expected to receive forgiveness and grace is the place where you were abused? We have stories like that in our culture today, don't we? Examples in times where the church has acted in such a way to trade on the grace of God and thereby drive people away from God through our actions. You see this in clergy abuse, you see this in laity abuse, you see this in the mistreatment of fellow worshipers, you see this all the time. And Jesus explodes with anger against because the very place where we are to receive grace, we find it. And it's interesting because here's where I think this text 
becomes very fascinating. Right? Because remember the verse that I told you that was really eating at me? His zeal for his father's house has consumed. Zeal for the house of God is consuming. I think zeal, Jesus' zeal for, for those who are being abused at the very place where they are supposed to receive grace is what consumes him. It's what takes him to the cross where he is consumed. It's what drives him to the place where his body becomes the new temple, the new place of reconciliation and grace. His zealous advocacy leads him to the cross where the very systems of abuse are nailed to the tree and put on public display for all of their futility and ugliness. Any system where those who are weak or marginalized or on the outskirts, where the, these people are being abused, this is what drives Jesus to the cross. His zealous devotion for God's justice leads him to be consumed by the very system he seeks to replace. And overcome. So that you and I can come to God without Christ. And a new temple is set up, and a new home for the Spirit of God is offered, and that is the body of Christ. And you are a part of it. You are a part of it. You understand that, right? The church is called the body of Christ. And if the body is the temple of God where reconciliation happens, then you actively being a part of the church is God's active work in bringing reconciliation to the world. Through you. As you are in Christ. Which leaves us with just one question. What are you zealous for? As a part of the body of Christ, what will consume you? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God. In Christ we see a zeal that overwhelms, that consumes. In Christ we see that that zeal is for us, but especially for those who have been marginalized or abused, mistreated, 